Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I'll be sharing what I've learned about Ernest Everett Just. Born on August 14th, 1883, died on October 27th, 1941, notable scientist, nationality, American. Ernest Everett Just was born in Charleston, South Carolina to Mary Matthews and Charles Frazier Just. His father was a dock builder while his mother earned a living as a teacher. Unfortunately, his father died when he was four years old, and the loss resulted in financial difficulties for the family. His mother relocated with Just and his two siblings to James Island, where she found work in the local phosphate mines. James Island was home to a Gullah community, of which Mary became a well-respected member. Few, if any, women worked as miners, but the job provided a higher income than those typically filled by women. She used her earnings to purchase real estate and encouraged other black locals to do the same as a means of achieving progress. Mary had been a teacher in Charles and helped to establish the school in the newly established community. The town that these early investors founded was named Marysville in honor of her community leadership. Just attended the small local school that had been founded by his mother. There were few local options for Just to further his education. Thus, at the age of 12, Just was enrolled at the Colored Normal Industrial Agricultural and Mechanics College at Orangeburg, currently South Carolina State College. At 15 years old, Just completed the school's teacher track and received his teaching certification. Uninterested in teaching, Just instead opted to move north to attend the Kimball Union Academy. Kimball is a boarding school at the high school 9-12 to 12 level. To earn money, Just worked odd jobs as he made his way to the school in Meriden, New Hampshire. Having achieved good grades at Kimball, Just earned scholarships to help with his tuition at Dartmouth College. Just's time at Dartmouth would have a tremendous impact on his life direction. At Dartmouth, Just had the opportunity to take science classes which included botany and biology. Learning under several noted scientists of the time, Just developed a passion for biology and chose that as his major. Just earned high grades and was a two-year Rufus Choate Scholar, Phi Beta Kappa member, and recipient of numerous other awards. Just graduated magna cum laude in a class of 287 students, of which he was the only black person. Yet despite his academic performance and accolades, there were few opportunities in the sciences for black professionals. As with many other brilliant black scholars of the time who found themselves shut out of various fields, Just took his talents to Howard University. At Howard, Just taught English, biology, and zoology. He later became head of the Department of Zoology. Seeking a path to graduate studies, Just reached out to his former professor, who referred him to Frank R. Lilly. Lilly led the Department of Zoology at the University of Chicago and the Marine Biology, MBL, at Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Just spent the next few summers taking classes and studying various facets of marine biology at MBL. Lilly was able to use his pull to get Just into the doctorate program at the University of Chicago and to have his work at MBL be counted towards his degree. One particular assignment at MBL saw Just studying cell division in sandworm eggs. It marked the beginning of what would become a well-respected career in the study of marine life with regard to mating habits, egg fertilization, and embryo development. Just continued to teach at Howard during the school year, where he rose through the academic ranks and was a popular professor. To meet the residency requirements and other outstanding criteria needed to complete his doctorate, Just began in-person study at the University of Chicago. This required him to take a leave of absence from his position at Howard University. From a list of 30 nominees, Just was selected to receive the NAACP's first Spring Guard Medal in 1915. The following year, Just completed his PhD in zoology, capping off his tenure as a nationally recognized outstanding research scientist. Upon completion of his PhD, Just returned to MBL. He became a member of several professional science organizations and published multiple research articles in scientific journals, which further raised Just's profile. Yet while Just rose in prominence, he still had to contend with racism. In addition to Lilly, Just had other supporters at MBL, but he experienced a degree of social ostracism in the form of exclusion from some social gatherings. His relationship with fellow scientist Jacques Loeb soured when Just criticized the quality of Loeb's work. Their individual research projects reaching conflicting conclusions would result in continued bickering. It's believed that Loeb's disparaging comments about Just's intelligence and capabilities led to him being denied positions and larger grants from the Rockefeller Institute and the Carnegie Foundation. Just struggled to find permanent work at major universities or organizations in America. Just was trying to escape the obligations and bureaucracy of Howard, but some industry power players preferred that he remain at Howard. Some because they didn't want him at traditionally white research organizations, and others because they thought he could have a greater impact at Howard. 
yet just managed to receive two grants from the Rosenwald Fund that respectively lasted for seven and five years. They enabled him to make about ten trips to Europe between 1929 and 1938. In time, he came to feel more welcome and comfortable working in Europe among European scientists. His first home base was Naples, Italy, where he worked at Stazione Zoologica. He was next invited to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, Germany. Just had married Ethel Highwarden in 1912 and the union produced three children. Sources vary, but the couple divorced in 1939, either due to Just having abandoned his family following an affair, or the marriage simply falling apart due to his long periods away from home for work. During the same year of his divorce, Just married Hedwig Schelsner, a German woman that some sources cite as having been his mistress. His second marriage produced a daughter. Unfortunately, his time in Germany coincided with the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Just left Germany for France only to have the country be invaded by the Nazis. He disregarded orders for foreigners to leave in favor of completing a research paper. His delay led to Just being captured and interred in a Nazi prison camp. He was rescued by the U.S. Department of State in September 1940 after a relatively short imprisonment, but it's believed that Jess had been sick in the time leading up to his capture. Jess's time in the camp further deteriorated his health, and he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer shortly after his release. He returned to America with hopes of restarting his career at Howard University. On October 27, 1941, Ernest Everett Just died from pancreatic cancer. During his career, Just published over 70 scientific articles and multiple books. While he never reached its full potential due to a lack of opportunities, Just is regarded as a pioneer in the field of marine biology and embryo development. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes and sources are available on the Noir Histoire website via the link in the episode description. I'm working on creating downloadables and infographics, so keep an eye on the website. These Black History Facts are released every Wednesday, so if you enjoyed this episode and want more, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my Black History Facts playlist.